experience of poor fluid pressure and many other issues. Now, many of this thing individually has been reasonably well understood, but we do not have still an integrated model for the reservoir induced uh, or reservoir triggered uh, seismicity. So this was the main motivation for us uh, to see that whether we can address this issue. Now, the obvious uh, choice was to look at the COINA first because we had one of the largest uh, regular triggered earthquake, uh, 6.3. And even after uh, so many years, almost more than 50 years, the, uh, there is a persistent uh, seismicity in this region. There are more than 200 earthquakes, more than magnitude 5, and many thousands uh, which has occurred. It was also seen, you can see in the figure, that the, there is a close association with the frequency of seismic uh, events and loading and unloading of the reservoir. So annually, uh, this is being seen that how in last uh, several years, that how each month and the reservoir levels, they correlate so well with this. So this is, we consider as a world-class site for understanding this and uh, interpret earthquakes. And ICDP has, uh, mentioned that this is a sort of a lighthouse project of, uh, as far as to understand this part. So this area is a very ideal choice to look at uh, whether we can have some understanding about trigger earthquake. Now, one of the important aspect in this is, of course, the Dolachiwadi fault, which is the responsible for this uh, seismic activity. And this is uh, has been mapped extremely well by Geological Survey of India, and it comprises uh, many fractures, uh, fissures, uh, which are oblique or diagonal to transal cracks. And this is very well done. It is on the Koina side, it is a strike slip, and the, the, as you come to Varna, it is a normal. And also this uh, helium data shows that the anomalies, helium anomalies is aligned with this fault. And this fault is still active. And uh, also this was confirmed by the activity uh, by drilling the three kilometer. So this area is, uh, could be a very good site for taking up the this study. Now, of course, uh, this was a very important activity, so there was a large amount of consultation done, uh, both national and international experts. The first thing which we do, did was the uh, MOU with the International Geocontinental Scientific Drilling because a lot of technical information also required. And then we had a workshop where many people from global and Indian, they came and all aspects about geological, geophysical, the drilling related issues, all those was discussed. And the, we decided that, okay, this kind of a scientific drilling has to be done. And the government uh, approved this program for 2013. And I must tell you that this program is uh, quite long. You know, the, normally we estimated at that time it will take about 15 years to come to some definite understanding. So it was really good that for government to approve such a long-term program. Now, basic idea behind this was that uh, we need to understand the mechanism of the earthquake and whether we can model the genesis of reservoir triggered seismicity. So these were the broad uh, objectives. There are many things to be done. And we know that uh, if you want to characterize the lot of experiment done as listed here, we need to understand the physical properties of rock uh, before, during, and the after the earthquakes. We need to understand the 
fault geometry. So we had to put a fault on observatory there about the hydrology, what kind of fluid gas uh, composition and where it is occurring, the temperature, heat flow, the kind of a stress which is there, and of course, pore pressure. So it is a very large amount of measurements are to be made. And each measurement is its own uh, intricacies and the expertise required to each of these things. So large number of team also required uh, to have the addressing this kind of an issues. Now, the planning was uh, done with a lot of consultation and the first thing what we call as a preparatory phase, uh, which lasted about a couple of years, uh, the plan was to have a nine uh, boreholes, uh, could be about one, 1 1.5 kilometer deep around the, the, this fault. And then based on the information which you get, uh, we need to choose the site for the pilot borehole, which could be about three kilometer uh, deep. And that would be instrumented and based on the data, which we will go to the deep borehole about seven kilometers or so. The idea of going up five to seven because most of the seismicity occurs in that region. So we wanted to go to the area where we can measure the various changes. So this is the broad uh, plan which uh, was prepared and accordingly the work uh, was done. The first was the preliminary the, and the exploratory drilling was done and the large amount of geophysical uh, data collected uh, about heat flow, the magnetotellurics, the gravity and magnetic, the airborne lidar, geological seismology. So practically all kinds of analysis which is required to be done was carried out. And a lot of new information came from uh, this study. I have not listed everything here. Uh, those who are interested can go to this uh, three excellent papers, which provides the lot of uh, data, new data, which has come from this. But the important thing as far as this issue is concerned is the first, we found that the lava, the Deccan trap thickness is about 1,250 meters in these places. And there are 46 different lava flows lying directly over the basement rocks. So this was the very important aspect because the total number of lava flows were not known, nor the exact thickness of the basalt. So this is the first new information came out. Also, the uh, the about the basement granitoids were mainly granite knees, granite, magmatite knees, and there were a lot of presence of strain quads and indicating that there was a lot of under stress. The other important thing came is the there was a feeling that there would be a sedimentaries uh, between that and trap and basement rocks, but we found that it's directly overlying. And one very important thing that there were hardly any undulations, it's hardly about less than 100 meter, which looks to be very, almost you can say it's a flat because the granite was exposed for a very, very long time, almost billions of years. Uh, but there is no much variation. It's almost flat. This is another very important uh, discovery was made. And the many fault fractures and etc. were found, and they were found to be correlated with the seismic. <coughs> so this was the first uh, thing, and also there are a lot of uh, cores of about 10 kilometers, and a lot of information came out from these cores. These are some of the sample where it showed beyond doubt that this is associated with the faults, having granular flow, sacred site, ejected veins, pseudotechalites, shattering. This has been visible in many, many samples all along this. And not only in the core samples, but also in the microscope, it could be seen that this area is definitely associated uh, with the faults. 
and also there is uh, evidence that the water uh, you know percolated uh, along those fractures right up to depth of uh, about three kilometers. Now, this uh, also some of the experiment done to understand that what is the strength of this basement rocks. And uh, this idea was that if the strength is lower, that also gave an indication that the seismically that area is very active or it is very close to the fault zone. Now, what we found is that their strength is much, much lower. You can see in both these uh, figures than the other similar rock types in other regions. Now, this also says uh, the lower strength also says that there is frequent occurrence of a low magnitude earthquakes because the rocks are weak, so they cannot hold a large amount of stress. So as soon as certain level of stress builds, it breaks and the small magnitude earthquake occurs. So this is a very important uh, understanding which we got from these uh, preliminary studies. The, all this information put together, so we, we realized that the first is the temperature because this is very important for the further drilling. And at 1.5, it was about 56 degree. So it was done the model up to 10 degree and found that it cannot go beyond 130 to 150 degree at 80 degree at three kilometers and six kilometer about this. So at three kilometer, 80 degree, it was possible that we would be able to drill at that depth. So this was one very important aspect which we could understand. And then the about the various physical properties uh, mentioned, like uh, the weak planes, the secondary mineralizations, the low conductivity and the fault and fluid zones, the association of the density and velocity anomalies with the seismicity. And as I told you earlier, the uh, basement rock strength has been considerably weakened because successive many earthquakes which have occurred in this. So this provided a first hand information. And probably we need to choose. And based on this information, we could also decide the location for the pilot pole holes. Now this result. Uh, sorry, sir, but you are not audible. Hello. Dr. Nayak, sir, you cannot. Um, okay, due to some, uh, he uh, he has left. Uh, he went out of the session. Uh, so we will try to reconnect with him. Okay. Are you here? So I think he. So we will try to connect with him shortly.
Hello. দেখেছ সকালবেলা উঠে কাচ্চার কাচ্চার তো বাই বাঁচা গেল বাঁচা গেল Hello, sir. Dr. Yeah, Nair, I think, yeah, uh, we lost connection uh, in between. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, he was lost. Actually, uh, you were not audible. Now, yeah. Yeah, okay. we can hear you now. Yeah. Just uh, go back to that uh, two slides. One more. Go back. NKM is a problem. Yeah. So I think uh, we lost from here. Uh, uh, one more slide. One, one, one more slide back. back. Go back. Okay. One. Yeah. 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 Okay. So after this uh, preliminary work, we had uh, workshops at national and international level. And uh, we decided that we will do it into two phases in uh, three kilometer depth. The first as a pilot borehole, and then based on the information which we get, up to seven kilometers. So this was the main thing. And then uh, we went to the pilot borehole drilling. And I must say that uh, this was, uh, drilling itself was a major challenge because uh, in India, we have never done this kind of a drilling uh, in such a rock type up to this depth, and, uh, but uh, there was a lot of uh, discussion with the experts from ONGC, Dr. Sukanto, and uh, they planned how exactly it is to be drilled and the kind of uh, hybrid drilling technology which they planned also to save time and cost. This itself uh, was a major, uh, I would say, the achievement of this project that how to go drilling in such a deep, uh, in the Deccan basalt kind of an, uh, basement rocks. So this uh, air hammer and material, mud rotary drilling together, you know, we saved a lot of cost and time. And this uh, drilling of six, uh, three kilometer was completed in roughly about six months. This was also very efficiently was done. This uh, also during the drilling, the we did not took all the cores, but some cuttings to, because we had made about 10 kilometers of cores and many other experiments like uh, online gas sampling was done. This was uh, done with the support of ICTP and all geophysical aspects has been listed here were done. And this location was very close to the Donachi Wadi port. This was very important because we wanted to find that whether there are any fault damage zones were seen of. And this was also visible between two kilometer and three kilometer. I'll show you a little bit more evidence of that. And the large number of cores uh, is one of the excellent core laboratory, which uh, I think uh, if you get a chance, you should visit Karad, where the uh, very modern core laboratory has been uh, set up. Uh, for analysis, for storage, and everything. So this is just uh, for the information of the all delegates. And this, uh, I won't go into the details of each and everything, but we found ample evidence of the fractures, the breakouts, the transite fractures of very weeds in all along. And this basically found during uh, 
depth between two and three kilometers. Also, the other important thing, the lot of uh, fractures and uh, faults, there is a small, even small at the microscopic level, we find lot of alteration, chemical alteration because of the uh, water percolation. And this is seen the, in many samples uh, of this kind. So this also provided that evidence that the water did percolate up to this level. And one of the very important uh, online gas monitoring, which showed very clearly about the high helium content than the normal, which is found along these fault zones. So, and this, of course, this experiment itself was set up was a major challenge to measure and uh, do this. And I must uh, compliment uh, Dr. Sukhant and a team to accomplish uh, this task. Now you can see that uh, we found actually seven major zones where the anomalous physical properties and there is a large amount of fractures and all that between 2100 and 3000 meters. Now all this are correlated extremely well with the anomalous helium scale. So it, you can see both this, it, matches fairly well. So we could say that this is the area which is the fault fracture zones related to seismicity. And then there are a lot of integration of the geophysical and geochemical this data. And it was, we are pretty sure that the below 2000 meter, this is the zone which is the most critical for us. The about seven different zones were punctured and we made it confirmed that we are very close to Dona Chivadi fault zone. So this was a very important uh, outcome of this uh, pilot portal. Also these uh, various uh, stress and fracture, the relationship and how it is associated with the reservoir triggered specificity was done. And it was found that uh, the subsurface conditions were quite conducive for having this recurrent seismicity because we found that the, what we call as a optimally oriented critically stress and hydrologically conductive fracture. So this was very important aspect which was, uh, came out of this pilot board. So what we learned is uh, up till now with the, all this, that there are seven major zones were identified. The active fault zone also found out and the all fractures are with the siliceous material, which also said that the evidence of water percolation and evidence of strike slip to normal transitional faulting environment was also found. And this, the variability in the deformation, which found is essentially because of the frequent earthquakes. The strength is also indicates that there is a recurrent system. So there are different proxies which are indicating the same thing that it is uh, seismic activity. And one of the very important things which came out is that the rocks are not strong enough to produce very large earthquakes. This is another very important aspect. And the temperature estimated, which is very important for the main borehole, that up to six to seven kilometers, it won't go beyond 150 degrees centigrade. So this, all this information is now being collected and the ultimately this will be utilized for deciding the site of the main borehole. Now, after this, uh, there are a lot of uh, experiments are going on. There is a five station network has been placed. The pilot borehole it will be very soon will be instrumented. And this, the Donachiwari fault trace, uh, which shows that we are right on the track on this. And uh, the earthquakes which are occurring between four to 10 zones. So even if we go up to seven kilometers, 
we would be able to hit this and the fault is still very active. So these are the things which is now currently going on. I'm sure that Dr. Sukanta will brief you on some of those aspects, which is now one very important study, which uh, possible to do with the, about using GPS and earthquake data together, that the strain accumulation in the Koina area, there are two reserve Koina and Varna, is more, almost 11 times more than the Varna. Now, annually, the Koina releases about 20% of the accumulated energy. But the Varna is a, a seismic zone. Almost all energy is released. Now, that essentially means that the in Koina, the earthquake activity likely to continue for much longer than in the Varna reservoir. So, and the total energy which is up estimated in Koina up till now can lead to an earthquake of 5.8 magnitude. So this is very important because if all energy is released, we can have a reasonably large earthquake in this region. And this information is very important to plan the other, that we assess the vulnerability of this area and we can plan accordingly that what uh, resilience measures are required to be taken in this region. Uh, this modeling also activity has been initiated and uh, initial results are good, but we know, need actual data from this and then we would be able to come to this. Now, what is need to be done is we need to, long-term monitoring has to start for which we need to set up the observatory in the pilot core hole. The core samples are being analyzed for variety of aspects about lithology, how, what kind of uh, deformation, geochemistry, physical, mechanical properties, all that. Now, this, uh, after drilling the seven kilometer, we will be setting up a deep borehole observatory, and then we would have probably the understanding of the earthquake mechanism which will allow us to have some understanding that during large engineering projects, what is likely to happen? And we need to build our capability to predict the earthquakes in this kind of a situation so that we can build some kind of a model whether any other new large structures can come, whether there is a possibility of a triggered earthquake or not we can assess. So this is the plan uh, because of the shortage of time, I won't go into details, but uh, the three kilometer will be instrumented with the all kinds of uh, thing. And then once we have a seven kilometer, it will be also instrument. So I think next five to seven years are going to be very exciting and challenging to get the information about these aspects, which will help us to provide the details of the uh, understand details towards the understanding of trigger earthquake. Apart from this, there are many other studies. I mean, I have not listed all the studies, but very important thing came out about Deccan volcanism, the paleomagnetism, the thermal structure, geothermal potential, the records of climate change, geomicrobiology, and many others. So there is large number of other information also came out from this kind of a deep drilling. And uh, this is, I think, is very important. And we are convinced that, you know, the we need to build our capability for the borehole geophysics. And this uh, very modern laboratory has been built in Karad. And uh, this is now being uh, further uh, instrumented and many things are coming up. But I think in coming years, uh, we would be depending more and more on the deep borehole geophysics to understand many issues which the earth science has. And initially, now we have planned about five to six deep boreholes all along the Indian uh, subcontinent to understand many of the geoscience related issues. I must thank uh, for this presentation, especially Dr. Sukhanta Roy 
and lot of learning which I had from Dr. Harsh Gupta and support provided by Dr. P.K. Bansal and of course the uh, Dr. Tiwari and earlier directors, uh, Brunal Sen, Askar, and scientists, which provided a lot of input in this. So thank you very much for this presentation. This is the image of this uh, pilot board board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Nayan, sir, for sharing your vast knowledge and experiences with us. Now, I would like to request uh, our international advisor, respected Professor Andrew J. Michael from USGS to provide his uh, remarks on the session. Over to you, sir. So um, I am I'm astounded by this plan to drill to seven kilometers. This is um, absolutely fantastic. Um, as, as I think you probably know, the um, initial plans for the San Andreas Fault Observatory at depth, we hoped to, to drill to depths like that. And particularly at Parkfield, um, that would have allowed us to get from the creeping section of the fault down where we are and are near some small repeating earthquakes, but down into the lock section of the fault. And we, we were not able to um, attain um, depths deeper than, than a few kilometers. So I, I think to have a, a borehole in a active earthquake region um, to this depth is a phenomenal project. I um, I just can't wait. I, th um, I don't really have a question about it. I, it looks like a wonderful plan and um, I will be waiting with bated breath and hoping for your great success. Thank you so much, sir. Now, uh, may I request our international advisor, respected Professor Daping Zhao from Tohoku University to say, uh, provide his remarks on this session. Over to you, sir. May I come in for a minute? Uh, Anvesha? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Muted. Excuse me. You are muted, Anvesha. Anvesha, you need to unmute. Ah. <laughs> Hello, sir. Okay, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I just want to say a few things. Uh, I, I must also admit uh, that we were greatly benefited by San Andreas uh, Fault Observatory. The kind of documentation uh, which you had at the details, which, which also we made uh, use of while uh, planning this experiment. So I'm extremely grateful to you and uh, USGS. And the, the most important was the documentation. The, one of the best documentation I have ever seen for such a large experiment. Very true. I'll pass that along to the people who did the work. Hello, Dr. Jao, yes. sir. Sir, you may provide your remarks on this session. Uh, okay, so uh, now uh, may I request Dr. Jean Hordbeck from USGS to provide uh, her remarks on this session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. That was a, a fascinating talk. And again, I'm, I'm also tremendously looking forward to uh, getting the results from the, the deeper drilling. I'm especially fascinated by the idea of understanding 
um, stress and fault strength at depth. That's the, you know one of my my research interests is is trying to find roundabout ways to measure what the stress might be and um, you know the opportunity to make direct stress measurements at, at seven kilometers depth is really just phenomenal and I'm really looking forward uh, to the results from that from that deep drilling. So thank you very much and and really looking forward to hearing your results. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, due to technical glitches, uh, we lost Dr. Jao, sir. So uh, now, um, as we proceed now, may I request uh, our session chairperson, our uh, respected professor J.R. Kayal, to provide his brief remarks on this session. Over to you, sir. You are muted, Dr. Kayal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. At the outset, I must sincere thanks to Professor Nayak for his illuminating talk on this deep drilling. I think this is uh, this is the uh, this is not only a great challenge. It's a it's a unique project and the first time that we are making such deep drilling in the hard rock country. We may have some experience in the sedimentary basin for oil exploration up to three four kilometer, but in the hard rock country. Uh, this deep drilling is definitely unique, and uh, the project is to, you know, to assess this hydrogenic fault, and the drilling is going down to the fault zone, hydrogenic zone. It is a, it is an ex, it is an unique experiment. Thank you so much for uh, enriching us with the new information. Now you have talked about a five point earthquake. The stress is more in the Koina. Uh, site compared to the Warner site, you said that Warner stress is getting released more than the Koina site, and you are apprehending an earthquake of, you know, say medium to strong earthquake 5.8. This is a very good information. I just, uh, uh, you know, possibly large earthquake is not. This is not the zone for a large earthquake because it's interplate zone and 6, 6.1 earthquake is expected and your 5.8 earthquake in the, in the near future or whatever in the, that, is, that is the, you know, that is the potential of that uh, surgeonic fault. I think it's quite very, very much, it's not only informative, but very, to me, it is very, you know, fascinating that you have given us this information and uh, what to say? I think it, they say I, I happened to uh, visit this drill site uh, once uh, in the in international workshop, and I have seen how the you know huge cores and data are being. It's, it's a storehouse of you know a storehouse of a lot of information of geological, you know geophysical and chem geochemical and what not. So thank you very much for your wonderful uh, presentation. We all enjoyed and all, we all enriched by your really very illuminating talk. And uh, we, we hope that uh, we will have more success in such type of drilling in the seismogenic zone on the, you know, right on the seismogenic fault. Thank you very much for illuminating us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Kyle. And uh, I think uh, the idea of this also to brief the delegates and also interest, make them interested in this study. We will be very happy if anybody who would like to take up any study in this area, uh, Dr. Sukhanto will be more than happy to support uh, their activity because the data is, as you rightly pointed out, the data, the cores is so much, it's not possible for any single institute uh, or even a couple of institute to do this. You know, we need the entire country and international participation to uh, understand and analyze and come up to some definite conclusions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your kind welcome. Absolutely, very true. Thank you, sir. Now, may I request Dr. Sukanta Roy from BGRL, Minister of Earth Sciences, to say a few words on this session. Over to you, sir. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you're probably asking the wrong person because 
it was uh, it was dr naik uh, when he, when as secretary uh, in the ministry of earth sciences that this program took off and uh, we have been guided by him and uh, many others dr harsh gupta so i think the project has reached this stage today uh, mainly due to the guidance of uh, people uh, like dr naik and also the international scientific community uh, who with whom we engaged uh, through the international continental scientific Dr deep drilling program from experts from us germany japan france and many other many other countries so i think i i i acknowledge all of them and uh, i really hope that we can uh, make some good progress in the coming years on the lines that dr naik has outlined uh, uh, in his presentation um, i also uh, would like to uh, um, uh, repeat uh, dr naik's statement and welcome all of you to the borehole geophysics research laboratory whenever an opportunity arises uh, we'll be really excited to, in discussing uh, these aspects more on in more details with all of you thank you thank you sir uh, meanwhile we would also like to uh, take a few uh, questions from the audience uh, with your uh, kind permission sir uh, so uh, if anyone have any questions then they may uh, raise their hands or post in the q and a box okay so now uh, we would like to proceed uh, now may i request uh, dr debojit hazorika from wadia institute of himalayan geology to say a few words on this occasion over to you sir okay so uh, i think he has uh, disconnected so now may i request our session co chair person dr vivit suryanto from gmu indonesia to provide his remarks on this session over to you sir okay thank you very much uh, only one word it's very wonderful experiments um congratulations uh, dr uh, selas maya and also dr sukanta rai it's really great <laughs> uh, experiments and uh, we also uh, have a dream to to have this kind of uh, experiments uh, i remember that in in uh, um, our uh, area we have uh, what what so called opa fault this is uh, the fault that responsible for the jogjakarta earthquakes in <clears throat> 2006 6.3 and it is always a discussion about the the uh, uh, source mechanism of of the earthquakes is it uh, from from the seismological data it is uh, so that it is a strike slip fault but from geological point of view uh, it suggests that it must be uh, like a uh, 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 a bit normal fault and until now still we did not have uh, any answer for this so deep drilling project is one of the opportunity to to be the judge of uh, all the questions and uh, your invitation uh, to involve uh, whatever uh, we can uh, join the research is yeah, very yeah very uh, thank you very much and we also see uh, we would like to wait for the result of uh, this uh, project so a great experiment and thank you very much for sharing it is uh, very i'm lucky to be here to see the the result is very wonderful thank you very much thank you thank you thank you very much I think uh, uh, I think Onesha has got disconnected. Uh, so if uh, anybody has questions, they can email to us. 
So we'll uh, we'll send those uh, questions to Professor Naik sir uh, for his reply. I may request uh, Dr. Sinmoy Raskor, scientist from NIST Surat, uh, to give his vote of thanks. Over to Sinmoy. Thank you, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes. 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 A very good morning to one and all. It is my proud privilege to propose the vote of thanks to all on behalf of CSI NIST family and entire organizing committee of IBWGST 2022. Firstly, I convey my sincere gratitude and heartly thanks to Dr. Shailesh Nayak, Director of National Institute of Advanced Studies, Karnataka, India, for accepting our invitation and delivering today's talk on a scientific drilling in Koina, an experiment to understand triggered earthquakes. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experiences with us. We are very fortunate to have you one of the keynote speakers. I also express my sincere thanks and gratitude to our director, Dr. G. Narahari Shastri, uh, for providing immense help and support in conducting the workshop. I would like to offer our deep sense of gratitude to international advisors of this workshop, Professor Andrew J. Michael from USGS, Professor Dapeng Zhao from Tohoku University, Japan, and Professor Alan L. Kafka, Boston College, USA, for their valuable suggestions and support for the event. Our heartfelt thanks goes to session uh, chairperson, Professor J.R. Kyle, from our Deputy Director General, GSI, Government of India, and co-chairpersons, Dr. Vivit Suryanto from Indonesia and Dr. Devozit Hazarika from Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology, Dehradun, India, for their immense support and guidance towards the event. I would like to thank special guests of today's session, Dr. Zain Hardbeck from USGS, Dr. Sukanto Roy, Director BGRL, MOES, Government of India, Dr. Julian Z. Boomer from Imperial College, London, Dr. Arun K. Gupta from Ministry of Art Sciences, Government of India, and Dr. Avijit Ghosh from University of California, USA, for their gracious presence despite of their busy schedule. I also extend my deep sense of appreciation and gratitude to Dr. Santanu Burwa, the convener of this workshop, for conceptualizing such a stunning idea to organize this virtual workshop and thus facil facilitate the direct access and scientific exchange to the geoscientific community with the experts and pioneers of seismology and tectonics from across the globe. My warm thanks to all the members of organizing committee for their dedication and timely support throughout the online meet. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the attendees for their active participation in today's event, without which the event would not have been a success. Further, I solicit your continued support during the course of this workshop and look forward to see you all for the next session, which will go live at 10 a.m. Indian Standard Time tomorrow. Our keynote speaker for tomorrow's session is Dr. Avijit Ghosh from University of California, USA, with his lecture on structural complexities Control Rupture of Himalayan Mega Trust. With this, I conclude with hearty regards and anticipation. Namaskar, and thanks to all of you for your kind presence. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Our session is over. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.